my original pieces, uh, and I make it out of um, gesso and black poppy crayon and lacquer on a on a panel. And um, these other ones are G clay prints, mounted and lacquered G clay prints of other of bigger pieces, basically. Uh, the two small pieces on the end, the originals are four feet wide and 28 and 5 eighths high. The originals of these are 45 inches high and 119 inches wide. So they're, they're quite large and these are um, um, mounted prints that I then put a, a back border on so that, that it has basically it's like a miniature of, of the real ones. I, 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 I've framed these in all kinds of different ways and methods, and uh, this, was, this particular method was suggested to me by someone, and I thought I would try it, and I, and I really liked the, the look of it. And they are, they're lacquer. They're, you know, it's not going to uh, be damaged by sunlight. I use, I use uh, industrial acrylic industrial lacquers that are, uh, you know, have sound, have light barrier things built into them chemically. Uh, so the idea of these as a, a group is because I've been working on this series of uh, musicians and dancers and musical venues for about 20 years. There's a, a tradition that goes back, well, in this country I have seen murals that were scratched and painted and uh, used charcoal. Uh, in Montana, there's a place called Bear Gulch, and there's some Native Americans have been coming there for four or 5,000 years, and there's a canyon wall of, 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 of this mostly white limestone, and there are thousands of these incredible pictographs uh, uh, and paintings on, on these walls, and a lot of it is about warfare. But there are there are obvious dancers, and may, they may have been part of whatever ceremonies that were going to be held there. And it was a place where they would come and do ceremonies. And so there's the Europeans like Bruegel that would exploit these sorts of special events, communal events where people would. You know, enjoy themselves and have fun in a, in a new way. And the, you know, there's uh, Thomas Hart Benton is an American that, that did this sort of thing in, in his own way. Um, uh, John Stuart Curry did some of this sort of thing. A, a lot of the American regionalists in the 30s uh, would uh, do things that were similar in theme. Um, I, I started doing them at a point when I needed a new subject matter. I've been doing something different now. I needed a new subject matter. And I thought, well, what else do I like to do? I like to go to places like this. And so I decided that it would be fun to, to uh, somewhat document uh, that, that particular lifestyle. And so we go, to, we go to these places and enjoy ourselves. I bring my cam, I used to bring a, 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 big, a big camera now I, can, now I can bring my little, this thing here, and it, it does way better pictures than my, than my $1,000 Nikon, or at least the way I could use it. So these, um, um, I, I, I discovered at some point when trying to be, think about how to talk about what I do to describe my point of view. And basically, I make these things in tribute to the musicians, to the dancers, and they're the people that, that, run, that own and run and keep these venues alive. Uh, it's, it's a very, very risky business, and uh, there's always changes, both from the musicians' end and, and from the venue side. Uh, this particular venue is Rio Nido Lodge, and there, there's a, probably a show going on there tonight. It's a fantastic place. This particular piece is in, is in one of my son's backyard in Long Beach a number of years ago. Uh, he invited his old hippie parents down to see what he was up to 
And <laughs> so he brought, he brought a bunch of his burner friends together, and this particular little thing, which is like a big half a balloon, I don't know, 10, 12 feet in diameter, and he set up his laser light show, and he oh. showed us what he's doing uh, at that point in, in his life, besides his regular job. He was doing all this stuff uh, after, after his, his weeks of work. And um, I'll, I'll get back to this one in a moment. Uh, uh, this, this is Redwood Cafe, beautiful venue. I've been to lots and lots of shows there, and they quit doing music. So that's what I mean, it, 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 things are always changing. This is another place. This is a real and brand in Sonoma. It is in an old building that used to be Little Switzerland, if anyone oh, yeah. has ever heard of Little Switzerland. Oh, okay. And they've been running music shows there for the past number of years, but have recently changed ownership, and we don't know if it'll, be, if it'll come back again. So it's, there's all these, but because I have had so much fun in all these places, this is just my way of remembering them. Uh, this is Twin Oaks Tavern, or Twin Oaks Roadhouse. It's been called a number of different things depending on ownership. Um, Roberta and I have actually been going there probably since 1974 or five. As a, the, Something like that. Not not all the time, and maybe not often. There were, sometimes there were years where, where there was no music there, but then it would come come back alive, and there'd be music there again. So, but this is a show that that um, was done in in the place in, inside the building in this little ballroom that the new owners had had uh, re rebuilt rebuilt and moved the stage. And they actually made it a really nice small, you know, small venue place. Um, and the gentleman playing that night <coughs> was Tommy Thompson, who is a well-known Sonoma Valley musician. Uh, uh, he played with Norton, people like Norton Buffalo, and he is a member of uh, Western Swing Societies in several states. Uh, uh, it's a little too much time to explain what Western Swing is at this moment. But Tommy is very good at it, very devoted to it, and it goes, you know, plays plays shows at festivals of that kind of music. Certainly uh, in the Southwest, where there are shows like that, and all of these people that I'm showing dancing in this particular picture were there that night, and, and uh, we actually are, are we're dear friends with these folks here who we met at Twin Oaks, you know, three or four or five years ago. And uh, the, um, Tommy just turned 75 years old um, about a week or two ago, and we were at this birthday party. Uh, he is now doing more music than he's ever been able to do in his life. He actually made his living as a, uh, a sailor. He worked on, mar on maritime ships, and he would play uh, um, Occasionally, he, would, he loves to put together big bands. Western Swing is a, is, a, is a big band type music, or can be, and he would love to have 10 or 12 musicians on the stage with him, but there's not room at Twin Oaks, so he brought these people, and uh, uh, it was a, a really wonderful show, and I thought I, I wanted to, I, I wanted to um, have a way to um, memorialize that event, because Tommy doesn't do that many shows, even though he's more active now than he used to be. There's still only three or four shows a year that he, that he does. So, uh, so that's really, uh, I think, all the points I, I wanted to try to remember to make. I have notes in my pocket. I'm not, now, I'm actually going to get away with not having to refer to them. But I do want to thank y'all for coming and keeping this venue alive is like keeping these venues alive. It takes people to do it. So bless your hearts for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.